Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the Caro de Combattimento 45 ton. It's a tier 10 Italian premium medium tank. It's located on North Spawn of Prokhorovka and it's under the command of Citroen 01, but he's um, kind of borrowing it actually because um, it's somebody else's account and it's a premium tank he doesn't have. That's mainly because I think this tank is a reward tank for Clan Wars and, uh, well, Citroen 01 doesn't take part in much in the way of Clan Wars. So, if he wants to experience it, he has to borrow it. Now, Citroen 01 is normally fairly interesting in his battles and I'm expecting good things from this one. It's a 120mm gun, capable of 400 alpha, and it's an auto reloader as you can see, it's loading four shells already. Seeing as it's uh, kind of like an advanced version of the Progetto 65. This could be very interesting. Okay, looks like he's going to get shots on that IS-7. <laughs> yes! And he felt that. And he felt that one too! <laughs> he got high rolls off both of them. So the IS-7 is not going to be too happy now. Okay, he's so rapidly reloading those shells. Again, it's one of these tanks where it works if you fire just two rounds and wait for them to reload because they reload much faster than if you fire all four and then hope that uh, you'll be able to get them back in time. Okay, got some damage into the T-62 as well and it was another high roll. Lumber of enemy tanks sitting at the centre line and he's paying them back because they can't see him at the moment. He's just using that ridge line. This tank is rather good because it's got nine degrees of gun depression. Not the best you can get, but it's pretty good all the same. And I think the 120mm gun is probably modelled on the American version, although I haven't got confirmation of that because Wargaming haven't created a wiki that will actually explain where the features on the tank come from. It's not a real tank, it's a fake tank because obviously the Italians didn't have this one. Oh, enemy tank in sight and that means we've probably been spotted as well. Well, we weren't spotted. Six cents didn't go off, so we're lucky here. Go for the top of the turret. Yep, nice. Went straight through and a high roll again. But he was seen this time because he was just a little too close. But two and a half K of damage already racked up. No damage taken yet. Now he's using all premium ammo, as he did in the previous battle. Premium APCR. Standard AP, but uh, he hasn't got any. Does have a few HE rounds just in case. There's no RT in this game, so he's not being threatened by any shells coming over. Obviously, RT do actually um, deter people from pursuing this route, or at least being more aggressive the way that uh, Citroen 01 is being aggressive here. You have to watch out because the moment you get spotted, there's a good chance that an enemy RT round is going to come in and ruin your day. But uh, at the moment, he's doing rather well. Unfortunately, his team isn't. He seems to be the sole player on the team that's actually doing damage. And they're already four tanks down. Nice shot. Takes out the T-62A. Gets him his first kill. Looks like the TNH also managed to get a kill during the game as well. E50 takes a hit, but it's a low roll this time for 392. Now, are there any enemy tanks ahead? Yes, there are. And it's a Conqueror. Difficult turret's pen, but that one sliced straight through his turret. And he got another round straight through the IS-7 yet again. And this time, because he wasn't spotted, the E50M had nothing to shoot at. It's just how close you get to these bushes when you fire, really, as to whether you get spotted. And then the tanks at the centre line start laying in on you.
from the design, I'd say that this tank actually owes a lot to the Bisonte because um, they both got similar shaped turrets. In fact, in many ways, it looks like a Challenger tank uh, in the design. Okay, this is going to be fun. Conqueror, 10 degrees gun depression. Caro has got uh, only 9, but look at this. He's making the best of it. He's actually shooting underneath the turret, and I think the Conqueror has given up. I think he's not playing, or at least he's AFK at the moment. We did take a round from the E50M, but there goes the Conqueror. IS-7 for one shot. Oh, he's a one shot, is he? No, I'm not sure if he is a one shot. He is now. <laughs> Definitely now. And he's out the game. So he only used... Uh, well, he did use two shells. Now, potentially, he's got high, high caliber because he's got 20% of the enemy hit pool. The question is, are there any enemy tanks sitting at the back waiting for him on the other side of the railway line? And the answer is no, because, but he can see that renegade. Puts around into him. He's a one shot. Let's go for the kill. Yes, got him. It's his second kill of the game. I think the enemy's starting to feel it. They are in a bit of a predicament now. The E50's managed to pull over into the second area, the uh, second dip, which means he's not so vulnerable. But he's popping up and coming over this side. This could be a bad move by him if he does come over. Okay, you can see the E50's moving up now. The trick will be to actually get to a piece where, or an area where he can use the dip, and he's doing that. He's cutting across now, going over to the tree line or those bushes, and then he can drop down into the second dip to get across. He's just checking his position to see if he's covered. He is covered. Fires around in, and he gets the E50M. Three kills now. But we know that the remainder of the enemy are over the other side and there's five of them left. They must be over the other side. So, yeah, he's going to have to try and quickly get across here. He's not been spotted. Oh, enemy 274A has been spotted. So he will take an opportunity. No, it bounced off the armor. He's got an Emil 1 who's actually side on. And it looked like he wasn't moving either. I think some of the players on the enemy team have probably given up. Okay, he's cutting across to get to the ridge line. The 50 is already in the second area, the second dip, threatening using those bushes. We really need some of our teammates to come down the road. The Astron Rex would probably help. They came down the road. It might actually let us know if there's any enemy in those trees. And yes, he's found one. It's a John Ninja 4. Takes one round, a low roll, 385. Oh, I think he missed with that one. He got that one in though, so there's two shots in. And the SU-130PM has been spotted, pumps one into him, and now he's used up all his shells, so he has to wait the long time. Just sits back here, waits for the shells to go back in. There's one. It's a long reload, but it's... Um, Probably not as long as the uh, the heavy tanks on the Italian line. They seem to take forever to reload. I think that was more of a speculative shot to see if he could get that Jar Future 4. There he goes. He's out the game, which now means there's only three left. One of them's the Heshbarn. The other's the Object 274A, and the third is that SU-130PM that we saw earlier, and there he is. Oh, he missed! How did that happen? No, he's got no shot there. We just don't know where the Heshbarn is. There he... Oh, no, it's 274. 
didn't get the kills. That went to the Viz 55, who was much quicker. Is he going to take the risk? He is taking the risk. He's going to go straight across. Now, technically, he's not a one shot for a hash farm, but he could t lose most of his hit points very, very quickly. And I think he's telling his teammate to fall back in the TNH T Viz 51 because he wants to take the damage and the kills and of course he's telling them not to risk it because that hash farm hasn't been found yet he has now and i think yeah one of our teammates the viz just took a big hit and there goes the hash farm su 30 pm there's one needs at least one more shot yeah and he gets him and that's the end of the game very impressive five kills and the gun is up Here's the end of battle stats, and we can see that Citroen 01 got a first class tanker in the Carrier de Combatimento 45 ton. He did get a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage, a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got nine, a fighter badge for taking out four enemy tanks. In fact, he took out five. And he also got a fire for effect for doing more damage than hit points with his own vehicle. He did get the high caliber in that one. He got at least 20% of the enemy hit pool and he continued to take out more enemy tanks and keep up his damage rate to secure that medal. Let's have a look at team score and see where he was. Well, his high damage in this one was 8,361 hit points. The highest competitor to him was the Heshbarn, who was never spotted until right at the end. He got 5,150, and the third highest damage in the game was the SU 130PM, again, not seen till later on during the battle. 3,685 hit points went to him. Uh, so, pretty good game on damage. Let's have a look at the kills. Well, he's got the highest number of those as well, with five kills. Four kills went to the Heshpan, three kills went to the Viz 55 on his own team, and the E50, and also to the SU 130PM. And when it came to base XP, he's got that one as well. So he's got the top in all three columns. 1,266 base for uh, Citroen. And 983 to the E50. 847 to the TNH Viz 51. That was the one he warned to pull back because he was vulnerable to enemy fire. And the guy didn't pull back. And in return, he got taken out because I think he got hit twice. Once by the Heshbarn and then by the SG-130PM. So, yeah, I think... He gave him good advice. He told him to pull back and take it easy, but he didn't, and he paid for it. 31 shots fired, 26 direct hits and 24 penetrations. Really helps if you've got the premium ammo that will do the extra pen. Uh, I didn't mention the pen values, actually, during the game. The standard rounds will actually get 248 millimeters of penetration. I didn't actually take a reading on what the uh, premium rounds do, but it really does help if you have those premium rounds at Tier 10 games. 8,361 hit points of damage, of which 3,625 were at more than 300 meters. So a lot of long range shooting. Two hits received, both penetrations, I'm afraid. He also took, um, spotted two enemy vehicles, damaged 10 of the enemy, killed five, did 1,263 hit points of spotting assist. On a free to play account, he earned 69,257 credits from the game, 34,629 from personal reserves, 15,000 from personal missions, a total of 118,886. But those premium rounds really do cost as a consequence. And the using consumables, he did actually end up with a loss of 61,548 credits for the game. 1,266 base XP. Times two for the first victory, 63 for this being a premium vehicle. Yes, because it's a rewarder tank, you don't actually get so much as you would off a one you purchase. And 2,595 experience points altogether. So the carrying 45 ton, I'm not sure how many of you have actually got one of these, but it certainly looks an interesting tank. In many ways, its qualities, it looks like or operates very much like a... Yeah, um, a cross between a chieftain and a challenger because of the shape of the turret um but yeah very efficient um i was very impressed um i haven't seen this tank in action before and uh, yes it it certainly did look as if it's a credit earner 
I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.